<laughs> you guys doing? You guys doing? I'm trying to figure out where to start. What you want to talk about? We got a lot of shit to talk about. Damn backstabber smiling in your face. What's up? Yes, hello, Veronica. Big black cocks. Yes, yes. I can't wait till my new, well, my microphone gets back. Can't call it new. This shit is annoying. Oh, I know how I can fix it. Let me fucking do some old jewelry rig here. What's up with y'all? Who said I would never go live again? We got some time. I'm making turkey legs and lima beans. Lima beans. So, yeah. Fat people coming up. You know? That goes to show, man. Hey, you know, I, I think personally that Andy Ruiz is kind of special. Because, I mean, look, that goes to show, like, for him, he's never been known to gas out or anything or have issues with conditioning and stamina. You know, the Charles Barkley of of boxing in regards to, to show that you can have athleticism and still be uh, nah Ruiz ain't calling the shots yeah quit your diet you know instead of getting that medium or that regular get that extra large man you know it's a good time to be overweight or what society considers to be overweight He's been chilling. He's going to be on Jimmy Kimmel tonight. I'm going to uh, DVR it. I got to remember to DVR it. You know, it's been a lot of... Hey, you know, people think... Like, I guess I'm, I'm a Joshua fanboy. People have been like, ha, 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 T-Street, your boy lost. I'll be like, what the fuck, man? Where do people get this shit from? Yes, I'm going to be covering uh, uh, Breeders versus Glowski. Of course, I cover every single World Boxing Super Series fight. And it's crazy because everybody go if 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 Donaire versus Inoye end up in LA, which it likely will, even though I cover every single world. Remember, nobody wasn't paying attention to this tournament for real, for real. But once that shit show up in LA, all of a sudden all the media is gonna be like, oh, but I covered every single war uh world boxing super series fight. Every single one. Shit. Ah. Ah. I got a pinched nerve in my back, man. I'm brittle. I'm getting old. You know, I'm going to be 36 in a few months. 36. Jesus Christ. But yeah, the rematch is going forward. You know, you know, they're going to do it over in the UK. You know, I got some interesting clips to, to for you guys to listen to. Yes, yes, Ivan. God damn it, Ivan, I know. So Dylan White, you know, everybody been talking their shit. Everybody's got an opinion and and. It goes just like, you know, being undefeated is, is, it's a good thing, but it's not, you know, it's like Mayweather made it like that. And fighters feel that, you know, if you lose your, your O, it's just like over for you, you know, you can lose. You know, four fevers and 27 flus. Nah, get out of here. That wasn't last year. That was a year before. But. Ruiz's next fight is going to be Anthony Joshua in the UK. It's a rematch clause. Here, I pull it up. Eddie Hearn has invoked the rematch clause. It's the rematch. Everywhere I go, the people are asking about it. He will return. And uh, no sanctioning bodies are getting in the way. Wait, did he take the tweet down? No, he didn't. He didn't take it down. It's here. My bad. It's here. So I'm going to read it to you for the illiterate out, here, out there. I'm going to give you some little, some read and rainbow. And I got to go check on my llama beans. I forgot. I don't want them to overboil. After meetings with Anthony Joshua, Rob MC, me cracking the um, uh, trainer, and the management team in New York, we have today triggered the contracted rematch clause with Andy Ruiz Jr. The fight will take place in November, December at a venue to be confirmed shortly. So basically, in my opinion, they trying to get this shit signed and sealed for any little wrenches get thrown into anything, which is smart, right? You know, you, they don't have no time to fucking wait around and then, you know, Al Heyman, you know, coming up with something. They don't got no time. They got to get that shit, you know, 
Because right now, Andy Ruiz, even though, put it this way, with the rematch clause, Anthony Joshua side and still in charge of everything. They're going to make things very, very difficult for Andy Ruiz the best way they can, you know, in regards to, um, you know, the shit is crazy. I'm still shocked. McCracken. That's what I call him. What's his name? Uh, Heyman is not going to have the rematch in the UK. What do you mean? He can't, he can't call the shots. If there's a rematch clause, you know, we don't know the details of what was in that contract. We don't know the details. That's possible, though. That's possible. Can a rematch have a rematch clause? Likely, nope. Nope, ain't no more rematch clauses after this. You know, um, Ruiz win. Al Heyman wins. They got the belt. They got the belts. But then, put it this way. If Ruiz wins, if he wins the rematch, then that's when the mandatories come in. Likely by that time, the WBO mandatory will be ordered in, and then it'll be the IBF. It'll be two back-to-back -back mandatories unless... They go right for Wilder, and then that would be, you know, Wilder versus or whoever wins between. Because remember, it's got to be okay. Here's the timeline. Here's the timeline. You got Wilder fighting Luis Ortiz in some time in, in in September, right? That that fight is bigger than ever. Now we got so much to talk about with that fight too. That fight is bigger than ever. Pay per view buys probably then skyrocketed. You know, maybe maybe fifty thousand to a hundred thousand over here in the states and over in the UK. You know, and and in other territories, that fight's going to make a lot of money outside of the United States. It's a lot of money in that fight now because of the stakes of what it means. So you have to think September, and and if they're not saying Joshua is not happening until November, December, then Deontay Wilder is supposed to be. He's saying it's signed and sealed, right, with uh, Tyson Fury. So, if he fights Luis Ortiz and he wins in September, then he say, he's saying it's signed and sealed for him to fight Tyson Fury after that. He fucked himself in a way, right? In a way, right? Because it's a contract right there in play. It's, it's, it's a complex situation. Because you would think that in a perfect world for Andy Ruiz and Anthony Joshua, they would fight early 2020. Like January, February, no later than March. So now Andy Ruiz is in a good spot because if he wins the rematch, he can go on and fight some um, some um, mandatories and call and really really call the shots. So the situation is real complex, man. It's a lot of moving parts, but I'm happy for Andy Ruiz. You know, I think that Anthony Joshua can bounce back. I think that he's too big. He's been getting too stiff. I've been watching all of his fights since the beginning. A lot of people that have been covering him on YouTube didn't really start getting on him until he uh, beat Charles Martin. But he used to be, he used to have a lot of bit, like a lot more fluidity to him. He's not, like he's just big and stiff now. Even with the Pavekin fight, Pavekin was very erratic in there. You know, his 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 pressure like it, it was there, but it, it was it, it was all over the place. You know. You know he's got to look. Um, he's got to get a, a strength and conditioning coach, and also like with all that bullshit. Listen, I don't care. Okay, panic attacks are very debilitating, right? So here is the rumors. That are that, that have been circulating around. In fact, let me pull up. Uh, uh, let me pull up the clip for you. Let me pull up the clip. Let me pull up the clip. He said he had a panic attack in the locker room, led on by the fact that he had the jitters because he was knocked out by Joey Duetko. Oh shit! What's Andre Ward saying? He just built all wrong. You know? You know, he's got too much muscle mass. Right. He's too worried about battle roping and lifting weights. Right. And he's the truth. He didn't get this far by not being the truth. He just built all wrong. What the hell? Hold on, it's some buffering shit. That's why I don't never like using Twitter for like videos. I wonder if I can find this. This is uh, new, obviously. 
you know, he's got too much muscle mass. He's too worried about battle roping and lifting weights and, and you know, looking like a model on Instagram instead of being in the boxing gym. By the way, he got up off out of four knockdowns. He kept getting up. Instead of being in the boxing gym, working on his craft, there's no substitute for that. Yeah, you know, you know, that muscle shit, man. You know, all them pictures and all that shit. Like, that shit don't get you nowhere. And, like, you know, you got to think how bad it looks. Damn, why the fuck is my fucking beard fucking itching? You know how, um... You know, this is boxing. Like, it, you know, you got to think that it looks embarrassing for him. You know, for him to get out, get knocked out by somebody who they consider to be a fat dude. Now, I put in the title yesterday, Fat Dude Knocks Out anthony joshua or makes anthony joshua quick i don't call him fat i'm i'm, I'm bigger than it uh motherfucking i weigh more unfortunately i know i've said it many times people keep bringing it up you know i feel like a fat slob but i be getting shit done you know but i'm brittle i'm not you know as athletic athletically fat as a uh, as a uh, andrew ruiz but you know man shit but you can get things done you know you can get look how small he did used to look. He did used to be a funny looking motherfucker when he was small though. Look at him. Look at the state of him. You think he was doing in the words of Ty and Booth? You think he was doing well sexually, looking looking like this? You think he was still doing well sexually? He just got too big, man. Paws, you know, just too much muscle mass. You know, you always see him in the gym. Listen, listen to this right here. Listen to this. Shh, shut up. Shh. Fucking Twitter. Well, this is him in the corner saying, you know, like, why am I feeling like this? You see that body shot though? Hey, I made some salmon yesterday. You know, here, let's go check out uh what Dylan White had to say. Cause I, I do need to go check on my food. Lord knows that shit probably gonna burn up. <clears throat> How does Ward know AJ lift weights? Of course he lift weights. We see him lift weights. Doing all that power roping, as he said. Dylan White was laying into him, though. But I don't. But Dylan White does say he has Anthony Joshua in the rematch. I'm sorry. Like when you lose like that, the way he did, you know. I'm sorry. Here, listen to this. While I go check on my food. I'll be right back. But Joshua also didn't fall properly. If you ever heard this, it's on Dylan White's channel. Be right back. And, um, you know, they're having Joshua to be the next, you know, like he's a big, he's a big prospect, isn't he? He's a big, big, he's a big prospect, man. Not prospect, champion, I'm not talking prospect. He's champion, I mean, he's, he's meant to be, you know, almost as fair or as big as Mike Tyson, just like the other one, you know what I mean? He's selling like arenas, he's, he's got three of the, he's got four belts, I think, or whatever. Because one was missing, he's knocking if one out, he's undefeated, so... You know, Ruiz has had losses, Ruiz has been active, active, he's had some, like, like um, some not so great performance and stuff, mm -hmm. so yeah. So, so what was your opinion of the actual fight? The fight, Joshua just seemed scared, not bothered, he was throwing punches and running, he was jabbing out of range, he was jabbing and retreating, he was fighting with his left hand down. You know, when he got hurt, he didn't know how to hold or to tie up or to survive. And he just, he just seemed like he wasn't bothered. He just seemed like he didn't want to be there. Mm -hmm. It was strange. It was strange. Maybe he just didn't, want, maybe he just did, he couldn't do with the pressure anymore. It's a lot of pressure, a lot of stress. He just seemed like, he just seemed like, he just seemed like. Because uh, on the oh, round, the round. He said to collect my money. That's all they seemed that, you know. He said he's a landlord. He failed to collect the rent. Well, he did, he did get paid, but, you know, he left, he left with the, the keys. That's fine. But, you know, listen, you live, you learn. 
You know, at the end of the day, I've had a, I lost him and I build back. I'm sure he's a big enough and strong enough guy to obviously come back as an Olympic champion, former world champion, almost had this big world champion. So I'm sure, I'm sure he'll come up bigger, better, stronger. And I still believe he beat Andy Ruiz in the ring match. I just believe that he need to look at his camp, look at what went wrong, look at what he did wrong, look at where he was spending his energy in the wrong places and correct him and come back. I'm sure he's got a very experienced camp with Robert McCracken. The whole of EAS, Sheffield behind him, they're yeah, proper scientists and proper energy in the wrong place. I'm sure they'll look at everything and correct him and come back. Maybe he should have gone up to America a longer time. Maybe he should have gone up to America two months ago or a month ago. You know, I had a really big issue with this right here. Listen to what he's about to say. I think Anthony Joshua should have been here a while ago. And also, he didn't get to New York until fight week. He did stop here a few weeks ago for like one day or two for like some, you know, media stuff. But, you know, he should have been here a while ago. Listen in. The whole of EAS, Sheffield behind him, they proper scientists and proper strategic people. So I'm sure they'll look at everything and break everything down. Maybe he should have gone up to America a longer time. Maybe he should have gone up to America two months ago or a month ago before the fight. Mm. You know? Do you think he will take the rematch straight away? I think he will, I think he will, I think um, he's a champion, he's got championship qualities in him, so I think he will take the rematch and I think, um, like I said, I believe he beat Sam and the Ruiz. If he doesn't take the rematch straight away, I'd be very shocked. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't take the rematch straight away, then that's not a good sign. You versus Mr. Andy? No, I'll knock on the Ruiz out. I told Eddie, if you want those belts back straight away, give me the shot. Make me WBO mandatory and WBO number one. But I think IBF might, if they have very much, IBF might end up stripping under Ruiz, which is interesting, which means the IBF belt might, be, might go vacant. And that's something I'll be looking to target. So let's see what happens. The IBF already confirmed via um, Jake Donovan from um, Boxing Scene that they won't interfere. So as it stands right now, um, no sanctioning bodies are going to interfere with the rematch. And the rematch is supposed to take place. And um, according to Eddie Hearn, in um, November or December, and he's finalizing the venue. And the sooner, the better, because once again, that right now, even though Joshua is still in control of the rematch and the because of the rematch clause, still they don't want Al Heyman planning anything. They want that shit finalized as soon as possible. They don't want no bumps on in the road. They don't want you know you don't want that type of shit to happen in this situation. You know because if Anthony Joshua does not take the immediate rematch then guess what? Those belts are going to be likely probably fragmented, you know, if, you know, or they're going to end up, it's three of them. Anthony Joshua can't afford that. He's going to have to get a mandatory shot. He's going to go all the way to the back of the line, you know, to the very back of the line. He can't afford that. So we're going to find out who he really is as a champion, and the rematch is bigger than ever. You may hear that, Rui. Listen, you know, like, what do you, like I, let, let me get you to understand this, right? I really don't think, then we don't have the contracts, but with the way a rematch clause usually works, especially for a fight like that, where there wasn't too much time to negoti negotiate and Andy Ruiz was a late step in, there's still, Joshua's side is still in control of the rematch. That's just usually how it's always been in boxing. Their side is still in control of the rematch. I would be shocked if the rematch happens anywhere outside of the UK. That wouldn't make no, that don't make no sense. You know, I'd be shocked. Yeah, Ruiz is going to get a lot of money. He's got a, he's got a Snickers package coming. He's going to be on Jimmy Kimmel tonight. I'm going to DVR that and cover that in the morning. You know, they sent this uh, big-ass stretch limo for him. We're going to watch some more of this. He's a star now. I'm shocked that I haven't heard nothing about them doing something for him in L.A. Like a press conference. Like he, should, he should be having a press conference this week. I'm not saying they are going to do it, but I think they should be having some type of something, you know, for him to speak to the media in his home, you know, something in Cali, right? That makes sense. So let's talk about the heavyweight division, man. That shit is, that shit is crazy. You know, everything has been, you know, things have changed. Hell yeah, I'm happy. Yes, he's on Jimmy Kimmel tonight here because Jimmy Kimmel doesn't come on until tonight. It's a late, Jimmy Kimmel's a late night show, right? From my understanding. So, yes, that's tonight where I'm at. It's, it's, it's what, 7 o'clock something. It's 8 p.m. here. 
I don't know why AJ's dad was shouting at her. The 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 rumors are that AJ had some type of panic attack in the back. That's the rumors. He had some type of panic attack in the back. They wanted to call the fight off. Like, where did, where would this stuff come from? You know, so I don't know how to confirm that, but that's the rumor. Is that AJ wasn't right. You know, that he was knocked out in sparring by a fighter by the name of uh, Joey Duetko, who fought Brian Jennings years back. And also, he was on an ESPN Friday night, not Friday night fights. He was back in the, like, years ago when it was around. Um, Joey. IBF might end up stripping under his, which is interesting, which means the IBF belt might, be, might go vacant. Hold on, Dylan, damn it. We're going to come back to you. Y'all know who Joey Duetko is, right? I've been covering him lately. Where did I cover him, though? Damn it, I forgot to fucking spell his name. What did I, oh, he fought Gerald Big Baby Miller, right? No, no, no. He beat Gerald Big Baby Miller, had that draw. What was the last fight I covered of his, though? Here, let me check. Let's put the T Street, right? What was the last fight? Yeah, this one. Sergey Kuzman. He fought Sergey Kuzman on the zone card. So, Anthony Joshua allegedly rumored to have called Joey DeWeco in for sparring. And Joey DeWeco sparked him out. That's the rumor. Is that DeWeco has sparked him out. And that Joshua was rattled. So, he had a panic attack in the back, in the locker room. You know, and Anthony Joshua's father wanted him to wanted to pull him out. But Eddie Hearn was like, nah, we can't pull him out. And you gotta understand why Eddie Hearn couldn't pull him out, because it's like, yo, this is a fucking you know, like this is his first fight over here. The zone is gonna be pissed. All these people, these Brits are gonna be pissed. There would have been a riot. So that's the rumor. That's the rumor. And a friend of mine who's a close friend to BY Jennings called me and confirmed it. And I'm like, uh, shit. So, like I said, you know, I don't, I don't know, man. That's just, don't shoot the messenger. You know, this is iced tea. And this looks like that fucking Marquez piss. Remember that Marquez piss? That shit was crazy. That shit was crazy. So, I don't know. You know, I I, I really want to see, you know, one of, one of these days, it had to happen. Where all this over marinating the fucking fights. You know. They fucked around too long. It was going to happen eventually. And Wilder can lose to Luis Ortiz. Both of those fighters have more. <laughs> they have more to lose now. More is at stake. Luis Ortiz and Wilder. That shit's a big fucking deal now. Yes. PBC has all. Even though. Put it this way. They have all the belts. But they can't get out the door until they beat Anthony Joshua that second time. They have the belts in their possession, but it's not signed and sealed. They got to win that rematch. But yes, this is a huge, huge win for PBC and Al Heyman. Because right now, as it stands, they have the belts. I don't think Luis Ortiz washed up. I just think that he just, you know, he, he's fucking looking his fucking real age. He's looking his real, real age. Like... Like I would I wouldn't be surprised if he's 52. Here's my theory. Here is my theory. Is that what I've learned, and I've learned a lot of it from fucking Scarface. What I've learned is that like when you defect from like Cuba, once you get on that banana boat, is what they call it, or 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 whatever they float over here in, however, and I, I heard they go through hell to get over here. You can be whatever you want. Once you get on that boat, once you step foot on whatever you Floating over here, your wrath and all that shit. You can be whatever you want. So I think when Luis Ortiz, like 1999, he was like 37. No, that would make him like some. No, that would make him too old. Yeah, no, that make him 57. No, he ain't that old. But I'm just saying, like once you get here, you can get you can get a whole new fucking. I don't even think do Cubans have social security numbers. But once you get here on the States, you get a whole new social security number, a whole new motherfucking birth certificate, a whole new new name. Of course, you're going to pick a Hispanic Latino name, you know, but you can be whatever age you want. 
Look how long Laura been around. Iris Lady Laura been around since I was fucking like 12. <laughs> Iris Lady Laura been around forever. You know? I think Louis is a tease. That's why you don't ever see him grow no beard. And he be trying too hard to look like young with his fucking his iPod ear earbuds in, whatever the fuck you call them shit. Some Android guy. You know, he be trying too hard with his unk unk hat turned to the side. With his Air Force Woods. <laughs> uh, he be trying. You know what? Let me just let me let me show y'all what the fuck I'm talking about. Let me show y'all what the hell I'm talking about. Louis Ortiz. And what if Louis Ortiz beat Deontay Wilder? What if Anthony Joshua loses to Andrew Ruiz in a rematch and Wilder loses to... F oh, my God. Unk, unk, Louis Ortiz. He come around for the barbecues. He always giving the kids. He give the, the, the nephews and the nieces. He like $50. He don't give $20. He give 50 Uh, Ortiz versus Hammer. Come on, fucking Louis Ortiz. Where is it at? What card was that? Oh, man, I didn't forgot what card it was. Anyway, you got to see how he be dressing, man. But, yeah, Joey DeWeco, they saying, you know, laid hands on AJ. Joey DeWeco. From Jersey. <clears throat> well, see, here's the thing. Joshua just looks slow and Andy Ruiz got fast hands. He's a very, he's a very, very sharp boxer. You know, not the best lateral movement, but he got way better lateral movement and movement overall than you think you would think for somebody his size. Very good counter puncher. You don't want to sleep on him. And he's accustomed to fighting taller fighters. So he so his lunge timing, or you know, if that's the right right way to put it, you know, he knows how to get his punches inside on bigger guys. You got to be ready. But once again, you know, why was it? Why Joshua Jab? Well, Jab was so lazy. It just was ill. Louis Ortiz ain't 50 years old. He like 52. Or 47. He can go for 47. Jonathan Banks gave an interview which basically said, holla at me. What? What are you talking about? So, yeah, I think that in my personal opinion, I think that, um, um, Ruiz will win the rematch. And if I was Anthony Joshua, what do you do? Because he can't do the same shit he was doing before. Like posting all these pictures of him with all these muscles and all that shit. And looking all dominant. Because his fear factor is going. Am I wrong? Like his like Nobody not really like. Like a lot of boxers are, are, are the way they, you know, like approach the media. Like, yeah, well, we kind of knew this. And yeah, you know, now we know how to get to him. You know, he can't guard the left hook. Podcast is coming at the end of the month, before the end of the month. Like, a couple weeks. I don't have an official date yet. I don't want to, you know, I, I want to approach it, you know, carefully because it, it's, you know, only time will tell. But it's really no way we can know until we see him in the ring again. But that's the type of, like, loss that can break you. You know? That's the type of loss that can break you. Ortiz versus Ruiz for undisputed. Ah, oh, man, please. And what if Tom Schwartz beat Tyson Fury? Ugh. See, they can't. They got to stop fucking around. They got to stop fucking around. They can't play around like this, man. It's too dangerous. How did Fury go down if Wilder um wouldn't couldn't catch him? It's just too dangerous. So let me tell you what we're doing. Um, I got a whole month pretty much of freedom. Well, I don't go back to court until like June the 18th, but for the most part, uh, my podcast is launching this month. I'm finalizing my guest lineup this week. 
um doing some sound tests as soon as my uh, microphone gets back i had to send my blue yeti back within like a week and a half it broke so that's off right now um we're bringing on some people that you're going to be interested in hearing from i'm not bringing on no people from my po- on my podcast that we're just going to be fucking wasting our fucking time we need real answers around here people we need real questions to be asked of the people you know for the people how long will ruiz keep those belts well once again the sanctioning bodies you know um i kind of i mean from what, from my understanding, from what I saw, is that no mandatories are going to be due until the WBO sorts out who their mandatory is going to be. Now, my theory is that the WBO really wants to make um, Tyson Fury versus Tom Schwartz as a WBO limited and make it the mandatory. But since Dylan White is right there in the way, they can't do that because he'll be like, "Hey, I'm ranked number one. How can you do that?" So it would be. It would have to be the winner of Tyson Fury, Tom Schwartz versus Dylan White because he's already number one to be the WBO mandatory. But if Tyson Fury, if he beats Tom Schwartz, turns that down, then they can appoint Dylan White the next mandatory. So, okay, so to break it down for you without talking all the mumbo jumbo, things are tight right now in in in, in the boxing um, heavyweight schedule for who has the belts, right? So you have Andy Ruiz with the WBA Super World, the IBF, and the WBO Super Championship. It's just, you know, they just wanted to give him extra belt. That was the one that they awarded Anthony Joshua. That Anthony Joshua handed to Andy Ruiz at the uh, at the uh, the uh, final press conference. So there's three belts right there. Oh, and the Jade highly coveted IBL. But they don't never have any mandatories. But anyway. So... According to Eddie Hearn, there's going to be a rematch. Whoever wins the rematch has to fight the WBO mandatory would be next. There's no more volunteers. It would be the WBO mandatory. But when would that WBO mandatory be ready? So you have Tyson Fury fighting June the 15th next weekend against uh, Tom the Swartz and you have Dylan White fighting Oscar Rivas on July the 20th. So they're going to order both. The WBO are likely going to order the winner of both of those to fight. They're likely going to order that August the 1st or sometime in August. And then they would have to fight the winner of both of those fights. They would have to fight around the same time that... um, um, God damn it, it's just fucking confusing. Anthony Joshua and Andy Ruiz rematch around November, December, January. Right? So then Andy Ruiz, the winner of Joshua Ruiz won't be able to fight again until probably April or May. And at that point in time, the WBO situation should be sorted out. And it should be the WBO mandatory April, May of 2020. Or it has to be the WBC championship because um, for undisputed because a uh, unification overrides a mandatory. But guess what? Deontay Wilder is already saying or already said that the WBC um, shot is going to be Tyson Fury in 2020 after he says he's going to beat Luis Ortiz and he's going to handle. So it's weird. It's weird. And, and it's all fucked up. It's weird. Everything's all weird now. Everything's all weird. People think Veronica's a man, baby. That's a man. So here, let's listen to a little bit more of uh, Dylan White. I like Dylan White. means come a long way. And uh, I'll be back. Go check on my llama beans and my turkey. I'll be back. Here, let's fast forward to some good stuff. There we go. I think fourth with the belts. You see, Gabe, you know, if I be a pool if you know, I will smash pool if the bits. And that's obviously a fight that you you straight away take, straight away gun for. Mate, like, I got a very big important fight against Oscar Rivas. Dangerous guy. He's even, Oscar Rivas beat Andrew Ruiz. He has, Oscar Rivas beat Andrew Ruiz at the Olympics. I know it way to the Olympics. That's why I know he's never made it to the Olympics. Oscar Rivas beat him and then lost to Camerley. Who went on to win the Olympics here. 
So it's very interesting. He's a very, very dangerous guy. So <laughs> he's a potential banana skin. So I'm just focusing on him. You know, I'm not doing a Joshua focus in a wild and fury and all that. I'm focusing so on do you him. think that you overlooked him slightly? I, I don't think he overlooked him. I think because there's no need to. He probably, actually, yes, he did overlook him because the way Andy Ruiz was acting, oh, can I have a photo with you? I'm a big fan and I, I can I take photos with the belts? You see, he gave him the belts, I walk off. You're a champion, you don't do that. So listen, these are mines. Have a look at them from here, they're mines. You know, he gave him to him and stuff. I bet he regretted doing that. He ended the belts to him. Mm, that gave him the fuel. Yeah, not even that, you know, Andrew is... I think, I think um, Snickers gave him the fuel. <laughs> he had a sh sn Snickers as a sponsor. Okay. Yeah, no, seriously. Yes, Nicholas is a sponsor. Yeah. A burrito. <laughs> a taco. Oh, it's a big achievement for him. First Mexican. It's massive. He made history, you know. Whatever yeah. happened, he's if he loses his next 10 fights, he's in history. He's in the books forever. Yeah. And that's something that 99% of fighters don't get to do. Yeah. When he goes back, he can have every taco in the world. Yeah. He, he best mind on balloon to 25 stones. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's happened to lots of guys. They win the belt and then they just go out of control. Hopefully, he takes his career more serious now and believe in himself mm -hmm. and train hard and come back and put on a great fight in the rematch, you know. Hopefully, he doesn't let it get to his head and just blow and spiral out of control. That's what happened to Buster Douglas. Mm. Upset against Mike Tyson, spiral out of control. Holyfield overpaid him and picked him up and knocked him out. Like you said, AJ kind of looked... He didn't look his usual self. He was... Like his hands were down, he was getting caught wildly with the left. <laughs> he was getting caught wildly with the left hook constantly. I said it time and time ago. Joshua does not see the left hook coming. He doesn't. He blocks on his his left side good mm -hmm. because he fights like that. And if you time him, that's what I did. Boom! As soon as he split the hand, left hook. Same thing the Ruiz did. When he throws his right hand, he doesn't bring it back. He throws it and then he draws it. If he throws his right hand and then he draws it. Cause he just to get so much power in the right hand, it's hard to, to go bum. He, 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 he really tries to put meat in it, and mm -hmm. so you have to, you have to really cow it. Mm -hmm. And if, he, if you're good enough, you can, you, you can time him, left hook. And that's what I said. I said it time ago, look at my interview some years ago. Joshua doesn't play the left hook well. How does but that... But it's hard to land it. It's hard to yeah. get some in position to land it because he's big and he's athletic and he's quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, you know... How does this affect a potential rematch with yourself? Do you think that it 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 damages the weight that it had behind it? No. Mm -hmm. It's still an Olympic champion. It's still it's still probably the, the highest paid the heavyweight in, in in boxing at the minute. Yeah. You know? It's still probably you know like it is probably a bigger draw than even the it's a bigger draw than Andre Ruiz. It's a bigger draw than Deontay Wilder still. Mm. So you know. Deontay Wilder made comments. Deontay Wilder sucks, man. <laughs> if he said to Joshua, the car has Joshua running away from him. Deontay Wilder has been running from me for almost 600 days. 600 days. You know? <clears throat> he had a chance to fight Pool Levin, and he didn't. That's the, only, that's the only beef I have with him. You know? In regards to Big Baby Miller, he's looking a little bit smaller, or a little bit smaller. Um, he's blaming some of the steroids or some old other shit. So yeah, he's fighting um, Oscar Rivas. Um, it's a dangerous fight to me because we're still trying to learn who uh, Oscar Rivas is as a fighter. In regards to that, I mean, I like I like Dylan White, but right now the heavyweight division is kind of up for grabs. Andy Ruiz does have the belts, but in my opinion, you know, I don't know, man. You know, see, he has the boxing ability, you know, to beat a uh, Deontay Wilder. And no, he shouldn't lose any weight. That's him. That's who he is. I mean, yeah, he can afford to lose about 10 pounds or so, you know. But not for him to be like, you know, losing 50, 60 pounds. Get, nah. He cool where he at. Pulev is not going to lose his IBF uh, mandatory shot, even though uh, um, um, Jenny Sushi really wanted him to lose his shit. I'm glad he didn't. Damn it. And the uh, WBO mandatories just got to be sorted out. I'm looking forward to um, uh, Fury versus Schwartz a little bit more now. Like these fights, they mean so much more. The heavyweight fights do. 
And Usyk, it's going to be interesting to see what he does next. You know, people swore that he just was going to just fight, you know, that he was going to just be like, all right, Usyk, it's your turn to fight Anthony Joshua like he wasn't an undisputed champion. I think that Usyk wants to have two fights, and I think that still is the plan from my last understanding, is that he wants to have two fights at heavyweight before he challenges for a title. And right now, if he really wants to, he can be the WBO mandatory if they could, you know, if they, if Dylan White, Oscar Rivas, and Tyson Fury, and Tom Schwartz don't sort their shit out, the WBO could uh, appoint him. But I think they'll only do it if he asks for it. Not to be like, hey, Usyk, all right, it's time for you to, you know. Nah, they want to keep them belts. Now, he ain't, no, the, the belts are fine. We already talked about that already. The belt, you got to rewind back. I keep saying the same things over and over again. The belts are fine. Nope, there's nothing in the way of the uh, Joshua Ruiz rematch. It's just that afterwards, whoever wins that is going to have to fight Deontay Wilder or whoever has that WBC title or they will be stripped because it'll be no reason or excuse because the mandatory should be in place. So everything's cool. Everything's cool. <clears throat> yeah, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel. Um, okay, put it this way. This channel was not going to be boxing. This is not my main channel, but this stream will be edited and uploaded to the main channel. But this channel was going to be from like, um, I'm going through a transition. We're getting some, some, some help, you know, financially around the channel. So the main channel's got to be spit shine to make it look all good, nice and everything like that. And we're going to keep it that way. So that's why you notice that I'm only putting out, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm still covering a lot of fights, but I had to cut out a lot of content. Oh, and another thing is, um, I'm just a few more streams from this channel being able to be monetized. So I got to put work in on this channel to be able to get partnership. So that's why, you know, I'm consistently doing streams, you know, on the channel. And I'm going to be covering other shit on this channel, like news and stuff. So I made the decision is that T Street Controversy is going, that channel is going to stay boxing. But this channel is going to be whatever I want. You know, I made that decision. So when I do start streaming back on the main channel, it's going to be a, um, a set schedule. I want I want 12 to 2 on Mondays, 12 to 2 on Mondays. And then my podcast is going to be once a week to start off. So, yeah. Shit's moving. So this week is kind of a dead week in boxing. You got a Golovkin versus Rolls. And it's like, you know, uh, you know, not really, you know, you know, not something that I'm looking forward to. Not something that I'm looking forward to. But I mean, in a way, like I'm going to watch it. Obviously, it's my job to cover it, but it's not a fight where I'm like, well, yeah, I'm hyped for this. Let's go look at the boxing schedule. Now, next week is going to be busy. Next week is going to be busy. And then remember, Charlo and uh, Harrison, that's postponed. Because it looks bad that now Harrison has an ankle injury when he was talking about at the press conference how it would be easy for him to pull out the fight if he wanted to. So remember this weekend, I mean, well, you know, you got Oscar Valdez versus Jason Sanchez. I am looking for, okay, top rank cards. One thing for sure is they're always entertaining and you always get good fights on the undercard, like the under undercard. So you got Oscar Val, uh, Valdez returning versus Jason Sanchez. That's on um, Saturday. Or remember Friday is Zab Judah versus Cletus Selden. I got to find out where I can watch this fight because we got credentials for this. We got credentials for this. I'm going to have to buy this somewhere. I'm going to watch it, but we're going to watch it. So I'm going to be covering this Friday night. This is Friday night. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. This is Friday night. What up, Sixto? So, yeah. And when was the last time Zab Judah fought? 
I know he was supposed to fight. Did he something happen when he lost his boxing license? I know he got booked for a little while off of some child support or something. I forgot exactly what. Okay, for one fight. No, he been fighting. It just ain't been. He had that. Okay, so his last major fight was Paulie Malignaggi in 2013. He fought in January 2017, January 2018. And now he's fighting. So he been he been out there. He been out there. This is crazy. So yeah, I'm gonna be covering that fight. Um I just hope no shit happened. And I hope he clean. Oscar Valdez versus Jason Sanchez. Gabriel Flores versus Salvador Ben Bersino. Golovkin versus uh Steve Rolls. Ali Akodomedov versus um I watched him before on um on uh Hollywood Nights. Marcus McDaniel, yeah, I'm, I mean, you know, I'm going to put a lot of effort in watching this card because it's the only, it's two major cards on that night, well, two medium major cards with two big, well, Golovkin's a big name, Oscar Valdez is still a budding name, if that's what you want to call it, and that's, that's, that's it, that's, that's, that's Saturday, shit, next week, we got super bad fighting, Senesa Estrada, I'm going to be covering that. I got to make sure I keep up with my women's boxing. I was slacking off the last fights after Clarissa Shields. Uh, Tyson Fury versus Tom Schwartz. Sullivan Barrera versus Jesse Hart. Michaela Mayer versus uh, Lizbeth Crispo. Andy Venice versus um, Albert Bell. This is June the 15th. This is um, um, ESPN Plus. And undercard is on ESPN too. Then also June the 15th, you got Josh Warrington versus Kid Galahad. Jason Wilborn returns. Versus uh, J.J. Matkoff. What else? Andrew Maloney returns. Andrew Maloney, Maloney, Maloney. Jason Maloney, the Maloney brothers. Uh, a card I'm looking forward to. The biggest card of the month to me. Um, now that uh, Joshua Ruiz is over. Miras Breeders versus Christoph Glowoski. World Boxing Super Series. Junior Dorticos versus Andrew Tabidi. Um, today also... Um, uh, Uluzana Usyk is the WBC champion in recess. So that belt is, uh, the, it, this fight is now for the WBC title at Cruiserweight. Miras Breeders versus Christoph Glowoski. Junior Dorticos versus Andrew Tabidi, Team Tabidi. You know, Mayweather needs to show up to this, man. Support, he don't be like, you know, he needs to show up to this. That's a big fight for uh, Andrew Tabidi. Uh, June the 19th, Aston Palikte versus uh, Kazoto Ano An An Anoka. Anoka. Damn it, I forgot how to pronounce his name, and I covered him fight before. This is an important fight to cover, cover because this is 115 or 118. I think it's 115. I don't remember. I'm getting tired. So yeah, that that's June. June 21st, um, Andrew Concio versus Alberto Machado 2. Andrew Acosta versus uh, Elwin Soto. What else? Connor Ben. Uh, yeah, remember June the 23rd, as I said, the Charlo fight is off. But you call me Ray Beltran. That's at the end of the month, June the 28th. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Jamal Charlo um, versus... Uh, uh, Brendan Adams, that's at the end of the month, June the 29th, the same day as Demetrius Andrew versus Salusky. Joe Parker versus Eric Molina is also on that card, kid. Your five versus Norberto Jimenez. Chad Dawson is returning. Wow. Mm. But all right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. This is going to be a short stream anyway, so I already figured I was going to not be here long and BS around the last 15 minutes. So I'm going to edit this up, go finish cooking my dinner, and uh, I'm going to upload this to the uh, main channel. So I'm going to be, as you can see, there's really no Fight View 360 stuff on the, well, it, on this screen it is, but I got some cleaning up to do with this channel, to, on this channel to get it ready for my T-Street Uncut content. So don't, if you don't want to see boxing, I mean, if you want to see boxing, Make sure you subscribe to the, the boxing channel. This is a, a channel for other shit. All right? I can't say it no better than that. I'm going to see y'all probably, I don't know when. Oh, Golovkin Rose Final Press Conference. So, probably, I don't know when that is. Yeah. It's probably going to be tomorrow or Thursday. Likely Thursday. Hell no, you ain't getting no more two more hours. See y'all tomorrow or Thursday.